Hello and welcome to Game Over Year, the video game podcast created by Gamers for Gamers with your host, Leon. Dave! And the Stag Beetle himself. Yep, that's right. We're all back here, November 21st, and uh, we have got some games to talk about as usual. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh, it's been so long. It has been. Uh, the last cast was Halloween, so it's been, it, is, it has been a while. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> uh, so but, much has happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Dave, what, what's, what's, what's been going on, bro? Oh, um, well, I'm legal now on the road, uh, but in terms of <laughs> gaming, um, I have been doing well. There was the Halloween special among the sleep, so that went out, and thousands and millions of people watched it, and it was amazing, and everyone thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> All people that watched it oh I don't know if anyone actually made it through every single episode but, oh uh, it was fun to do Nobody. i enjoyed doing it um i recently revisited it in fact today i revisited it um and just because i am an achievement whore i now have all the achievements oh good man um even though i've obviously played the game and so i was able to get through it a lot quicker uh, the jump scares were not so jump. You know, jump scares are good the first time, and then once you replay a game, less so. But what I like about that is that there's still moments where it scares the crap out of you because you're getting chased by things. <laughs> and so there was, there was still one moment where I turned around and screamed like a little girl because there was a dude there that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> so I still enjoyed playing it through the second time through and the third time through, and um, the. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street furnace homage that's in there still is very terrifying and still killed me. Oh, right. Uh, but that's done now, so I can put that in amongst all the completely filled, uh, finished games. Uh, move on to other games. Um, I think Outlast is a thing that I'm going to revisit. Oh, yeah. I will actually do a proper pl- let's play of that then it's still very much on my list of things to do so hopefully <laughs> next time we speak this battle have been done uh, anyway other games um defiance uh because um i've been listening to the music and the music's amazing so i thought fuck it i'll actually go and play the game and get back into the game and i've really been getting into the game it's i mean really, for those really that good. don't know i mean what 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 is what what is defiance um Defiance is a TV series that was on sci-fi, I think. Um, lasted three seasons, then got canned, sad face. But apparently they did wrap up the story, and it's basically set in the future, because all good science fiction stories are set in the future. Uh, and there was an alien invasion, because all good science fiction stories involve an alien invasion. Um, and they... The aliens came in these huge ships called Arcs, yeah. and then they attacked Earth, and Earth went, well, shit, and there was a huge apocalypse, and everything got wiped out, and then the aliens died, or they sort of integrated into humanity, I'm not quite sure what happened, uh, mm. but there was basically a ceasefire, uh, but these huge ships are still in the orbit, and every so often stuff falls from the ships onto the Earth, and they're filled with wonderful stuff, and they sell for a lot of money. Shiny. And- and it's basically the wild. The, the Earth has turned into the Wild West, so it's, it's sort of everyone is sort of Wild West era sort of technology. So they, when this technology lands, then there's huge fights. And basically, the story is these uh, about these arc hunters because there's people that go out and find these things and sell them for the money. Um, and it's sort of them dealing with coming into a, a town called Defiance, hence the name of the show, and stuff. And the game kind of runs alongside the TV series, but then there's extra things and sort of back history on characters. And it's just an excuse to shoot lots of people for fun. Um, It kind of plays a bit like uh, Destiny. Oh, okay. uh, In the sense that you have a character and you can have different classes and you get a vehicle and you drive around and there's missions that you can do. But it's... But it sort of also plays a bit like uh, Grand Theft Auto in the sense that it's one big map, sandbox, and as you're driving around, little side missions crop up and little time trials and Mm. 
things. So there's always something to do, which is kind of cool. And obviously, there's the arc falls that are from the game that all the players get together because it's multiplayer. Um, and then there's a huge firefight as you all fight over the items that fall from the sky. Mm-hmm. There you go. And it's on the PC and Xbox. Yeah, man. I mean, it looks it looks pretty cool, man. I mean, I you I know you've sort of t- spoke about it on the show before, and every time yes. I've sort of been like, I've I've got like more and more interested. Um, so I'll have to check it out at some point, dude. Definitely worth playing on the PC if you want the multiplayer experience, mm-hmm. because in the PC version you can do the in you know integral multiplayer stuff like talk to players mm. and interact with players and add them as friends. On Xbox, you kind of like, hey, there's that dude. He's another player. Hey, let's shoot things together. Cool. And now you run away. Yeah. And I have no idea how the party system works or how <laughs> you interact. With there's Ooh. a chat thing at the bottom that you can bring up, and then there's this huge chat overlay that fills the screen. Mm. And you're like, I'm going to have a conversation now using the keyboard, you know, on my controller, typing in the words. And then by the time you said something, the conversation's gone. You're just like, I box it. I'm just going to play as a single. <laughs> Oh, uh, so yes, yeah, so that's that, and um, then I decided to play a classic, June 2000, which was, funnily enough, came out in 2000. Um, it was like a 2000, ad- it was an anniversary of the original June 2, which came out in like early 90s, which was a Westwood Studios back in Command and Conquer era. Man, I Studios. love Westwood Studios. I've got so much RTS love, game. so much love for those guys, Westwood. Yeah. Um, and this was obviously based on the movie Um, and so you had the three houses Harkonnen, Atreides and Ordos fighting on the planet Dune over the spice and it just lent itself really well to an RTS because you got your harvesters out hoovering up all the spice which then gave you the money Mm. to build more stuff that you could then go and fight Um, I have the disc in my house somewhere you know as it is when you move house and country and everything things get lost so i ended up just downloading it off the uh, internet <laughs> um unfortunately when you do that it only gives you the game it doesn't give you any of the um ability it doesn't give you the ability to patch it so you can't get any of the extra stuff that came in with the new um, vehicles models characters uh, okay. and maps um and it also drops out all the videos so you don't get the full experience but you can just play the game and because it's a game that's set from you know so long ago you have to set the resolution really low so you can launch the game and it launches properly because if you have the resolution too high the game just goes and you get a black screen um so yeah so i started playing that and as with all good rts's you sort of i'll play one mission and then three days go by yeah i forget to eat so yeah, they're my games. That's what I've been playing this week. Uh, and obviously, there was Hearthstone. Um, I haven't done um, my usual um, Tavern Brawl videos because last week I was lazy. <laughs> uh, I, it was just, it was cold. And, you know, all the excuses that you can think come up with, I just, I didn't feel it was a good Tavern Brawl to put out. And this week was the heroic Tavern Brawl, which basically meant you pay really got the money or a thousand gold and it's kind of like arena you build your deck you then go 12 attempt to go 12 wins and then you get ridiculous amounts of prizes and if you lose three times then you're out um and because i'm not very good at arena and because i don't really have a thousand gold lying around i didn't do it but i don't know if mike had a go i may have done (laughs) so tell me tell us how did you get on with the heroic tavern brawl I gave it two runs. Uh, first run, not so good. I um, built... What did I build for the first one? Oh, I built a um, mid-range Shaman, but it wasn't the one that I have in my own deck. I okay. just copied one. And the key, like, different cards in it made a big difference, and I kind of mistimed everything. So ended up, I think I had two wins on that one. And then um, I gave it one more go and did Cthulhu Druid. And I think I won eight out of the 12. So I got a shitload nice. of stuff, but not nearly as much as you do if you do 12. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I'm out of gold. I'm not paying money for this. Fuck this noise. Nah. It's fun, though. 
I think they worked out that if you do four wins, five wins, you kind of break even with the amount of gold spent as the amount of rewards get back. So if you do better than that, then you've kind of made back what you've spent. If you do less wins than that, then you kind of screwed. Problem was, I kept winning loads of cards, and I've got like 50 unopened packs anyway, and pretty much all the cards <laughs> from it. So it's just like, well, that's pointless. At some point, I might open all of those. <laughs> but just sat there because there's not really any car I mean there's a few legendaries but nothing that I actually need specifically yeah. for decks so apart from that um, this week what have I mostly been playing I this week I've been mostly playing a bit of UFC I have oh yeah so uh, I decided I'm going to try and get back into it properly so I started on rank play and I got up to, I think I'm Division 7 now, which is near the top. And now I hate life. And I <laughs> don't like it anymore. Because it's just, like, I can't, I can't fuck people up. I can't, like, if I win, it's a hard-fought battle. And then I'll lose the next one, like, destructively. People have, the higher you get, it's pretty much you have to play one strategy and just be the best in the world at it. And... If if you like my style is a bit of everything, it just doesn't kind of work. So then I went to Ultimate Fighter, and um, I've got a. I made a new character in heavyweight, and I think he's now sixty-seven wins. Uh, I think eight losses or nine losses, something like that. So I'm doing well, but as I get up the ranks, it gets harder and harder. So now I'm kind of getting to where people are similar kind of rank or level to what i can fight at mm. so uh now now's the actual challenge but um yeah it's been fun like there's there's a lot of stuff in ufc that i forgot about and like the ultimate fighter thing the the best thing is when there's an actual event on you can kind of gamble and you choose who you think is going to win and how they're going to win and then you try and reenact it and if you call it right then you get loads of like extra points for the ultimate fighter thing. Oh, that's but pretty cool. It is, but it's a fucking pain in the ass because it's like I can usually get who does it right, but like sometimes it's like, well, he's going to knock him out in the first round. Knocking someone out in the first round against the computer on dif- decent difficulty is fucking difficult. <laughs> so then you like spend ages trying to do that, and then it goes like three round decision, and you're just like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to see on the next one what they do with it because I think this one, the first one was probably slightly better for the career aspect thing and they had a few extra modes and bits. This one, the Ultimate Fighter mode, is really interesting and mm. that was what was missing and, and, and they've done a, a good job on that. And, like, they kind of have similar to, like, Madden with the card mode. But, like, it's not so much as a... There's no auction house or anything. So if you get a really good card, you can't sell it. And Which I understand, they're all moves. But if, it's it's kind of difficult to get the elite, elite moves because you have to kind of win them from a pack hmm. or spend a crazy amount upgrading a move, which is either lots of money or a shit load of fights. Um, but I'll be interested to see what they do with the next one. It should. I don't think they'll do one next year. They're probably, I think their timeline on those is every two years, so it's probably one the year after. Um, and then apart from that, what else did I play? Um, Hearthstone, as I said. And then some Titanfall 2, um, which I haven't actually gone back to the single player yet. Oh, right, completely. so you've just been still like digging in deep on that multiplayer. Yeah, because I, well, I haven't pl- I played a lot and then I stopped completely and I haven't played it for probably about six days now, seven days. But I take back a little bit of what I said where I was like, oh, I want to build my own sort of class and so on. I kind of got more into it and then mm. realised it was a bit more balanced because you had certain types of and like I was I was trying to take on certain titans or certain fights in my class which wasn't what it specialized in so it was almost impossible to do so uh... once i just sort of played more to the strategy of it like I, I found a bit more success 
I'm a lot better as a pilot than I've ever been. Oh yeah. Like I was really getting into like the the first person shooter sort of like accuracy side of it, and I think the good thing about the pilot versus pilot sort of side of things is it doesn't take many hits to kill someone in it. I mean, it's yeah. probably even less than Call of Duty. Um, so you can kind of have very, very, very fast paced action. And if you're someone like me that I kind of, I use the car, which is one that you can have an upgrade of sprinting and shooting. And it's just like a fast paced weapon. It's not very good long range, but it's quite interesting when you kind of jumping in between fights and killing someone and running off and jumping up a wall. And it's just, you know, it's probably one of the best fast paced shooters ever. Um, I mean, I, I still, I still definitely want to pick it up. I mean, I, I was a massive fan of Titanfall. I, I thought it was a really good shooter, but I think uh, the problem it was just, just a, a badly timed release. Uh, you know, with Battlefield One yeah, kind of being released, exactly. You know, Battlefield uh, One and like Call of Duty being sort of around the same time. It's just, it, it is get. I think I feel it is getting lost a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it will. Well, I think it will well, shine on... through, though. I think it will shine through. Well, it's not all the sales the at the moment, isn't mm. it? Didn't the original Titanfall come out amongst a load of other bigger titles like Destiny and stuff, and so it got overshadowed again? You'd think they'd have learnt the mistakes from the first time around. I think the first time around they they did all right. I th- I think they I think they did pretty well off it. Um, you know, just beating it. You know, with a uh, Xbox One and PC kind of thing. Um, but you know that at least this time you know they are sort of tackling PS4 as well. So, um, you know, a larger player base there. I I think it, I think it will do all right in the long run. I reckon uh, it will be a late bloomer that one. Yeah. Are you getting the hang of it better now, Mike? Because I remember you mentioned it last time. You were saying that you didn't like the difference between the uh, rigs in the first Titanfall and the rigs in the second one, simply because it felt like the, the, the Titanfall one rigs were better. Yeah, it's it's just you. It's much more role specific now. So whereas before I was kind of a jack of all trades and I was given enough to kind of handle whatever. And now it's you know, you really need to stick to whatever your role is. Um, depends on the kind of mode. I've kind of got a bit more into, I think it's called Bounty Hunt. I can't remember, but there's one where you go off and you kill AI, which gives you points, and then you've got somewhere to hand it in. But if, like, the enemy kills you, they gain some of your points or lose you lose points and so on. And like that, That's quite a fun game. Um, I haven't actually played last titan standing once yet which was my favorite mode from the first one where it's just titan versus titan until the last titan dies but i i kind of i think the pilot aspect of it has got a lot smoother Mm. so i've kind of enjoyed that and um i need to i need to kind of deep dive back into it but it's you know i'm playing against random people so it's not as fun as if i was playing with people that i know Mm. yeah Oh, fair enough, dude. Fair enough. Um, is, is is that all for this week? Yep, it's all about you now. All Honestly, right. Cool. What have you been playing? Well, I uh, have been playing a lot of uh, World of Final Fantasy. Uh, I tell you what, fun game. Uh, really loving it. Uh, it's um, from uh, you know our lovely Square Enix, as you would have uh, realised by the title. Uh, it's an RPG uh, which has got an active time battle uh, system, uh, but with a twist. Uh, you can kind of you stack monsters on top of your head. <laughs> so like, well, like a hat. I have a monster hat on. Yeah, kind of. It's, it, it, but basically, what it what it is is you've got you've got your characters Lan and Ren, uh, who are sort of brother and sister, and they these monsters that you catch, uh, they can kind of stack on your head, and they affect your stats and you know like what moves you have and like that. So let's just say if it was uh, I don't know some form of water uh, monster, um, you would have like a bigger water resistance but then you might have like a, a problem against like thunder or something like that. So um, it's, it's kind of quite an interesting kind of way of getting around it. So you've got kind of two stacks as such, you know, with Lan and Ren, and you can kind of put them into sort of like a miniature form as well, because they're known as like giants in this place called Grimoire. 
Um, um, which is kind of weird as well because Grimoire is, is just all populated with Final Fantasy characters and sort of uh, monsters from across the series. Uh, they kind of have like the power in their arm to be able to wield uh, things called mirages, which are actually the monsters of Grimoire. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of sort of like a cross between Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy and Pokemon just because of the actual capture, capturing kind of element. Uh uh, is it odd... also similar to the um? Sorry, is it also similar to the mobile version that came out? You know the one where it was like you went into, uh, you were like the keeper of the history of Final Fantasy, and there was like a, a an incident and everything released, and so you had to go into a, a bunch of paintings and you had to fight various <laughs> monsters throughout Final Fantasy history to put them back. Did you um, ever play that one? I, I think I think I did play it a little bit, but it's it's not it's not really like that. I mean, you, you're not having to sort of capture them for like any particular reason or anything. Uh, you're just a sort of a mirage keeper as such. Um, but uh, it, it uses the uh, common story trope of uh, being, uh, oh, they've got amnesia. Um, <laughs> So you're basically going to Grimoire uh, to uh, kind of recover your memory and kind of quickly find out about this uh, prophecy uh, where the giants from the hill, uh, which happen to be you two because you're bigger than everyone else. Everyone's all, all in this sort of like miniature kind of form. Um, yeah. uh, like I said, it is populated with Final Fantasy characters, but they're not really sort of linked to their their original story if you know what i mean so like they're mm -hmm. they're part of this universe they may look and you know sound like them and i think kind of act like them but it's they don't really like reference like an, anything yeah. from them I kind mean, of like how they did it in kingdom hearts yeah it, exactly exactly like that um so uh, i mean you know obviously square enix uh you know have done particularly well with uh, sort of kingdom hearts in the past with like you know the disney kind of crossover so uh they you know they've got the they've got the experience to kind of do this kind of thing to get new people into the kind of final fantasy genre maybe might have a look back at some of the old ones uh because you know the system is quite familiar to the old ones um but you know with the twist of the stacking uh it does sort of uh makes some sort of interesting combinations uh it's, it's it's quite fun uh just being able to kind of go into that small format and then like having a larger mirage like under you and then like a smaller mirage on top it's sort of like a small medium large system um you can't yeah. like stack a large on top of a medium or anything <laughs> like that um there is also extra large uh, media uh, mirages as well um where you you kind of like summon them into battle and they can kind of attack for you for for a bit uh until they just die off and then it will come back to you guys um That's yeah so i mean I yeah it's quite kidding it, oh it is oh it is but it there is that there's plenty of humor in there it's a bit silly i mean like lan is you often used for comic effect of just being a bit dim um that's kind of that kind of thing and there's sort of the bickering between the two of them because you know they're like brother and sister kind of thing um so uh you know I, I i'm definitely enjoying it i'm quite i'm I'm quite near the end of the game now uh you kind of have to end up sort of picking up four keys uh i don't want to kind of spoil too much but to be fair i wouldn't be spoiling that much anyway uh it's just it's just sort of like there's sort of different areas cause that kind of like homages to kind of different parts of final fantasy history um Would so you say that because of the sort of aimed at kids, the difficulty is quite easy, or is it actually quite? I hard? wouldn't say so. I, I'd say I say it's quite difficult. You know, like because I mean, Kingdom Hearts is kind of you know uh, geared towards kids as well. I would say. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, easy. <laughs> and yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's no, hard and and there really is on this as well. I mean, there's like these uh, it, on in some areas there'll be like a this sort of square, well, sort of a cube kind of thing. It's sort of there, a black cube where um, you can kind of go up to it and it will kind of display a level on on what on what level it is, and it will be generally a harder monster than you you would usually face in that area. Um, so it will yeah. give you maybe the chance to kind of capture. Uh, you know uh, something that's pretty cool but any mirage that you do catch by the way does start at level one so you have to level up so if you're like at level 40 and you've just caught a mirage that you're like oh yeah that would be really cool on my stack then you've got to level that bastard up to 40 
yeah. and then put it in your stack because there's no point putting it in your stack straight away because you're just gonna well you're fucked so it's, yeah. it's on that kind of level the training aspect gets a bit gets a bit much but i found a few little tricks to kind of uh speed that up a little bit uh and uh-huh. you know basically just found some good enemies that a good constant stream of experience that can kind of get me sorted on it it was all about the shortcuts in final fantasy like, <laughs> oh, oh no oh, i yeah. have to level up for four hours but oh yeah wait, but the thing I, is I is that this, i, I did i did a massive like leveling up session uh like for one evening and now i'm just walking through everything because I'm, I'm just so ridiculously leveled for what i'm meant to be doing it's it, it's yeah it's a breeze at the moment <laughs> is it like typical final fantasy that there's many hidden things and little mini games and um there, there is sort of yeah little hidden things uh there is many games like uh there's like a coliseum kind of area like in uh kingdom hearts uh where you can kind of uh battle uh different level monsters uh there there's sort of literally some from the beginning levels right up to sort of the the higher end levels um uh, where it's not really like wave upon wave it's literally just one one hit it, but it will just be like because enemies can stack as well not just yourself so there might be a, like a big stack of something ridiculous that you'll have to try and take out uh i'm just trying to think what else there is uh there's sort of there's this other thing where th- there's the girl with no name I th- <laughs> uh I, that you, that's the first that, that when you meet her but uh, she has got a name but i can't remember what it was now but that when you first encounter her that's what you know her as <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it's sh- like good old RPG things. Here's yeah. a character that you're gonna just not know anything about for half the game, and then yeah. suddenly big reveal, huge twist. It's yeah. your mum. <laughs> the weird thing is, with that is that you kind of help out uh, some of the people that you've met uh, throughout the game within Grimoire, um, because mm-hmm. in this other area that I'm talking about, where the Colosseum and that is, that's Ninewood Hills, um, which is nothing. It is. A timeless place in such so like time doesn't pass or anything in that in that area it, it just doesn't make sense at all uh just bear with me um but yeah it, it within this place obviously there's this the girl with no name there's a door there and you can help some of the people that you've you've seen in, in the past and helped out uh you kind of help them fight their battles but they don't know about it and you can uh, essentially affect the past and uh, apparently That's but pretty cool. yeah I, it's it's a, it's a bit odd uh, but it's 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 a cool little mechanic because you know you, you might open up yourself to sort of some more minions that you can imprison um and uh as as well as uh, just getting some good XP as well and some items because uh, you you might get a cure seed so that you can put it in your mirage board for each of your mirages because uh, it's like the um, I'm just trying to think it's like the sphere grid a little bit in um, mm. um, yeah in Final Fantasy X um, but um, but a lot on, on a lot smaller scale huh? I was about to say, does it have a sphere grid? Yeah. Like pretty much from 10 onwards, every version had a sphere grid of some sort of shape or form. Yeah. It's kind of like that, I would say. Uh, I mean, not not exactly, but the, I mean, the cool thing is as well is that, uh, like in Pokemon, you can kind of evolve those uh, minions as well. So, uh, they'll, uh, you know, you could get a baby behemoth for example and then you can get like a behemoth and then it goes into I, I don't know, it's something like Mega Behemoth or something like that. Um, which I, I've got, I've got one as well. It's there. XL. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's all crap. I mean, like this baby Tomberry, Tomberry, King Tomberry. You know, <laughs> the the flans. I I I think they're sort of a, a flan for each element, something like that. It's just, yeah. it's it's all, Clearly. yeah, pretty Boss pretty obvious. Took about an afternoon to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, some of the areas are cool as well, just because, you know, like I said, they are, like, homages to sort of old Final Fantasy areas. Like, uh, the other day I was kind of going through, like, a, a Mako reactor, which was which was pretty awesome. Uh, and it had kind of, like, a re- uh, sort of a remix tune in the background of one of the Final Fantasy VII battle themes. It was pretty cool. Um, nice. um, but, yeah, I mean, that's about it on World of Final Fantasy. Uh, it's, I definitely recommend it um, for anyone that... It's just it's sort of like an easy game to play, um, uh, but if it has got those sort of difficult elements, if you wanted to actually kind of go into it a bit more and uh, 
explore that you know the optimum stacking <laughs> um but yeah uh, i mean I, i'm looking forward to getting to the end of it um but the other game that i have been playing uh is all well does uh, anyone yep. know anything about this one at all see i was no? going through emails earlier and i saw an email which was basically uh what looked like a spam email saying <laughs> we've hacked your system um you you are now an operative of this particular country. You need to go and do stuff. And I looked at it and I was like, this sounds really dodgy and deleted it. <laughs> and then obviously I saw your write up of Orwell. And I was like, oh. Yeah, you have to again. you have to put your email address in. Uh, so I already had an account and I put I made another account and put the you know the contact us email address in there and everything. Yeah. Because uh, I'm going to play for it again and I'm probably going to record it next time um, because I'm interested to see what there could is sort of different outcomes and everything like that could that could come out of it. Um, but for those of you that you don't know, uh, it's from the developer uh, Osmotic. Uh, it's a simulation game where uh, you you assume the role of a uh, a state operative uh, and monitor surveillance sources to find national security threats. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's it's an odd one. Uh, it's a five-part serial that began on the twentieth of October. Um, all episodes were released weekly, and they are all out now uh, one price price them all so you don't have to go and buy each individual episode or anything like that um that's cool it's, it's definitely a really cool game i definitely recommend checking it out just because um because I, I mean it's, it's hard because I, I don't want to spoil too much because obviously it's a very story driven narrative on this one yeah um but Is, it's does it play similar to things like papers please uh yeah i would say i'd say sort of quite similar to that yeah for sure um but you're like monitoring like people's conversations you know what they've posted on the internet on their social media uh you're also uh you, you know uh, if their computer is on you can necessarily go and connect to their computer uh and you know uh, look at their files and stuff like that so you know there's definitely a lot kind of to this game um but it's very much it it definitely walks you through it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There's sort of only sort of a few things where, you know, you'll have to sort of trigger, do certain things to be able to trigger to move on to the next bit. Um, so, you know, it, it, it does very much lead the way, but there is kind of things where, like, there'll be a conflicting data. So, in other words, you'll be, like, looking up someone and, um, you know, they might put two, there might be two different addresses, uh, you know, depending on what source you're looking at. Um, but you'll have to decide which one that you want to uh, do uh, for that. And, you know, mm. depending on what you choose there, you know, a different outcome could happen. So, uh, kind of I, like a, a point and click adventure game, but set in a sort of five minutes at Freddy's security system <laughs> with a bit of, um, 1984 thrown in for good measure. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's set, the the basically just to kind of explain the setting a bit more. Uh, it takes place in a country called the Nation, um, who is led by a modern day authorita authoritarian government known as the Party, the capital of Bonton. Uh, the the Party passed the safety bill, uh, where part of the bill commissioned a covert surveillance system known as Orwell. Uh, this allows investigations into the private communications of people of interest. Uh, your part in this is uh, as a citizen uh, of an unnamed country who has just been selected to use the system. Uh, in the first episode, there's a bomb that explodes in Freedom Plaza in Bonton, uh, which destroys the statue and kills uh, several people. Uh, your job is to investigate who's behind the uh, explosion, with the main suspect being Cassandra Watergate, an artist who was arrested for assaulting a police officer uh, at a protest at the plaza several weeks prior. Um, it's because basically she was on the scene. You could see her in the CCTV footage, and uh, that's where it kind of all starts uh, and branches off from there. Uh, I'm currently on the fourth part at the moment. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to finishing it and uh i do want to be uh sort of playing through it again just to kind of see um what what could 
it kind of happen uh but yeah i don't want to spoil too much definitely definitely worth checking out i would say uh i am sure. i was pretty hooked as soon as got, i got into it i was like oh yeah this is this is really cool <laughs> so as you say it's an interactive story does that mean that there is you know that there isn't any way to fail as such oh, I, I wouldn't say of... so i i think it, you would just you would continue through it would just be like it, it, i mean yeah i suppose you would fail maybe like Orwell could be discovered or something and uh, you know the shit hits the fan but I, I don't know yeah. I don't know but I, I assume that you would get through all five episodes it would just be dependent you know on what outcome happens at the end of that fifth episode but so it's not like you have to solve puzzles or anything like that um I, i'd say you know there is kind of you know some puzzles there of the fact that you know trying to figure out which is the kind of right information to flag up uh you know who to flag up as well because you know you might necessarily get someone involved who isn't necessarily involved if you know what i mean um, yeah. But the evidence looks like they are but they're not really okay. at all um uh, like because so i've seen like when you... sorry so... So it's not like if you point your finger at the wrong person and go, it was him, and they go, sure, and then kill him, and then the game's actually like, well, you got it wrong. The, the game just carries on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. It does, con it does continue cool. on. Because um, uh, I think, um, like, uh, I mean, for episode three, for example, I'm not, I'm not going to sort of spoil what kind of happens in the episode, but I, I, I've, I've been reading up about it, and uh, you know, sort of something happened in that episode for, um, um, when I was playing it, and when I was reading someone else's experience, you know, someone said something different, ha you know, a different outcome happened, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, okay, so maybe there's different kind of trigger points in different episodes. Um, That's great yeah so um yeah no I, I i'm i definitely want to play for it again just to sort of you know see what necessarily you know different outcomes could come come about Ooh, good stuff uh but yeah i mean that's about it for my uh gaming i mean i have kind of played some of my usual games like starbound i'm still playing that at the moment uh as well as a little bit of overwatch here and there um that's, that's about it have yeah, you had yeah. a go with a new character in overwatch i haven't yet no i still haven't played uh sombra isn't it Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and I'll well, you know what? I'll I'll try out Sombra uh, for next podcast. How about that? Sounds good. <laughs> Weird. Um. Well, Mike, you should come on and play play as well. We should play some. Uh, when you get your computer well, I sorted, if my obviously. PC wasn't blown up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when you get your PC sorted. Yeah, I'll, I'll get my brother to properly look at it tonight. Um, I think it's just it's a loose drive of some sort or something. Uh, okay. So should we uh, jump into some news then, guys? Absolutely. What news? There's fuck all news. <laughs> the gaming news. world is a game over. Yeah. <laughs> many, many news. Much news. Many what? words. Well, yeah, that's with the riveting news. Roll, roll with it. Well, I wouldn't say it's riveting news, but there is news. Go on then. Dave, hit us uh, with so how you... much thousands of pieces of news there are. Uh, at least 5,000 pieces of news. 5,000 pieces of gold. Yes. Uh, so for the three people that still play The Division, uh, there's a new... <laughs> so fucking true. <laughs> uh, why didn't I trade that game back in when it was like worth 30 quid back to me? It just sat there slowly going from a pound down to 80p uh, every, I, I sold it ages ago I got I think I got yeah. like about 20 20 quid for it and I, I was happy I was happy yeah so for the people that still care so yeah three people there's a new uh, survival expansion coming out tomorrow Yay. for PC and Xbox ones um, in all fairness coming... though Dave it does actually mm -hmm. look pretty fucking sick what they're doing with it for for, for that for uh, I mean, just that mode alone, it, it does look a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Because of the 24-player kind of element that you're going to talk about shortly, um, they're all kind of get dropped off around New York. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that none of your gear is, is kind of uh, available. Uh, you just have to kind of go around and pick up gear and survive. <laughs> yeah. It's basically Iron Man mode for the Division um, Battle Royale in December. <laughs> it's, it's effectively what they're doing is Christmas shopping in New York. The game. <laughs> uh, so you you basically have to run around and 
find shelter, find um, clothing to basically keep warm because obviously it's middle of winter, so otherwise you freeze to death, as well as getting attacked by various gangs and other players. Um, and then if you die, I think you just that's it, you're dead, and then you have to restart. So, like I said, it's, it's Iron Man, and as Leon was saying, you start with a pistol, and then you have to work your way up to better gear, and then you get to the extraction point in the dark zone, and then you go home for tea and buns, and then you vow never to play it again. Uh, and you have up to, as you're saying, 24 players, but I doubt they'll get enough people interested in that. Yeah, it'll probably just be you. You'll be like there running around going, hey, I need help. Mm-hmm. Um, you can... It's the same, exactly the same as with the division. You can help other players or you can shoot them in the back. So generally you have to work together, but someone could at any moment turn around and be a dick. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as the survival expansion, there is an update 1.5 happening at the same time. Again, PC and Xbox One and delayed for PS4, where there is a Tier 5 difficulty to make it even harder than it already is. I don't know how hard it was then, but from looking at people dying all the time, it looks pretty tricky. Uh, there's also a new gear score. You want to explain that one? Uh, oh, is, is it, that's basically, you know, like with Destiny, there's light level, is gear all score. Right. Got it. So yeah, it's just that. That's just how how things roll. <laughs> okay, uh, new weapons and new talents. So hopefully, ones will have added excitement and adventure and things to do as talents. Very interesting. Uh, but yes, all happening tomorrow and future. So yay! Woo. Maybe people will come back to that game. Maybe because they said that they were going to do three expansions. This is the second one. Uh, no, is this is one point five, I believe. I don't think it's this. They, I don't think they're actually moving into the the next ex- the expansion properly yet because they wanted to kind of fix the core gameplay elements first. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but um, if you haven't got the division yet, and you for some unknown reason want it. Head over to Green Man Gaming because it's Black Friday. Yay! The time when everyone goes mental and beats each other up for stupid useless items at ridiculous prices. Uh, you can go to greenmangaming.com and online shop and purchase things for ridiculous cheapness uh, between now and Tuesday. Uh, things like Titanfall 2 for $45.99. This is only euros because obviously I'm in Ireland and we do weird currency <laughs> uh duty infinite warfare is 63.99 from 79.99 uh what i did realize about this is games are fucking expensive it's like that huge savings and you still have to pay extortionate mm-hmm. amounts it's like games for 80 euros it's like insane um yeah so battlefield one's like 50 euros watch looks too uh, which apparently is doing really well. Like, it didn't make I, quite make top. I really 14. want to check it out. I do. I do want to check it out. But I mean, I, I do feel a bit burnt about the last Watchdog, so I've been a bit hesitant. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to wait until it comes down in price. But I, I'm definitely going to be one to check out. And I mean, I suppose what we just saw the quick on the Watchdogs note. Uh, did you see what they kind of got in trouble with, or rather, players of the uh, Watchdogs too? Uh, basically, by using the sort of the PSN sharing, uh, they'd actually been blocked uh, on PSN when they were playing Watch Dogs 2 uh, because uh, actually one of the NPCs has a quite uh, sort of explicit uh, genitalia on show. Uh, <laughs> you can see a vanish, wow. basically. <laughs> That's. Um... Oh, wow. Um. So yeah, some some people have been getting uh, temporarily suspended because of this, because uh, because <laughs> they are obviously taking this uh, picture of this nudity. Uh, uh, Watchdogs have obviously quickly, you know, got onto this. Uh, Ubisoft has said, "Look, we're going to patch the NPC. Obviously, they're probably going to Barbie doll it." <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I mean, well, why would you put actual female genitalia on your characters in your game? It's just, but the thing is, is that I I don't Why think not? it's many NPCs anyway. I think it's only b- this particular NPC. Uh, but there is male genitalia as well, and I don't. They yeah, don't I don't think anyone said anything time. about that. 
Yeah, exactly. Which is weird, you know. Like, you know, like that's why. Why? Why can we be like flopping out? But you know, as soon as there's a Vag on show, because cocks like... are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag cock trumps. <laughs> yeah, it's like fully naked men and women, and you can run into them by exploring it. It's like why? I mean, they haven't learned from what was the um, was it Mad Max? <laughs> Not Mad Max. Um, Max Payne. Oh yeah. The Max Payne. There was a you could cycle through all the the characters, and then there was a, a naked female model in it just because um and they got into a load of trouble then there was the other one which uh, the actress that she sued the game because oh oh it was beyond oh no what's the name of the game i played it as well it's uh, ellen souls beyond two souls yeah what's her name ellen something isn't it ellen page ellen page yeah that's it uh, but yeah, so again, they got into trouble because someone figured out that they could detach the, the camera and they pulled it back. And it was, again, was a fully naked model. You're like, why why do that? Is it because the you know the artists and the developers are just so sex style that they need to put naked women into the games just so they can get a bit of luck? But it's like, I don't understand. You know, if, if you're not going to see it in the game, why does it need to be there? Mm. Just action animal. And then you don't get into trouble like this. Yeah. You don't get this sort of thing. Yeah, no. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> Logic. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what else, Dave, man? What else is going on in the world? Oh, uh, yes. So, back to Nano's. Uh, so, yeah. So, Greenman Gaming. And then uh, Final Fantasy. As you were talking earlier about Final Fantasy, there is the Final Fantasy 15 coming very, very soon. Uh, 29th of November. So, ideal Christmas gift for people who have lots of money. Um, it's coming out on the PS4 and Xbox One. And if you know nothing about the game, there is a brand new trailer come out, complete with annoying American voiceover, uh, <laughs> which basically tells you everything you need to know about the game. So, it'll be all about the gameplay, the characters, the storyline. And my favorite thing about that is the fact that he says Niflheim as Nippleheim. It is very... <laughs> so we're talking about <laughs> nippy things again. So uh, this game has nipples. Excellent. Nipples confirmed. Yes. Nipples confirmed. <laughs> so you, you now live in the wonderful town of nipples. Um, <laughs> the interesting thing about that is uh, obviously being a Final Fantasy it comes with a brand new mini game, which is Pinball. And if you love pinball so very, very much, you can actually get the actual pinball game on mobile, which I've downloaded. I've not yet played it. I've been distracted by things. I have played it, and I just want to throw this out there. It's not really pinball. It's <laughs> it's it's basically you, you're just tapping the screen kind of thing, and some Love balls buckets. move around. This this yeah. is pretty much what it is. You, you, you'll see what I mean. I mean, that there is, you know, a, a little bit more to it, but... Not much more. <laughs> yeah. See, I remember the pinball games from ages old, like Pinball Dreams and FX Pinball and stuff. And they were really good. And they were like, they spent ages, you know, getting the physics of the balls. So it actually felt like the balls were pinging around the screen. Yeah. Um, but for me, this just feels like a, a tacked on bit of nonsense, like the Microsoft Pinball. Yeah. Which well, is you can't, kind of like you easy. can't, you like lose the ball or anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just say like the Microsoft Pinball? Yeah. Microsoft Pinball you're talking about awesome. Space Cadet yeah. yeah oh you need to pipe down Dave Space Ca- yeah Space Cadet was awesome gaming. it really was good <gasps> that was okay. like I maybe spent about 100 hours on that game <laughs> <laughs> so if you think it's awful you're just not good enough at it because once you get to that game was amazing <laughs> it was it's, it's you just almost up face there with the keyboard pipe... and you could... no it's, it, it's, it's a classic like up there with Pipe Dream and Ski Free. Can you can you get it? I'd love to play that again. I'm sure you can get it somewhere, but it's probably I, out there. I used to get extremely high with a friend of mine, and we would spend hours <laughs> trying to just just beat that game. And like getting the you know getting finally getting a good one where you've like hit, unlocked loads of stuff, so you're actually earning loads of points, and then just dying heroically at the end. Yeah. It was a great times, great times. It was really cool because you get to do missions and you could like level up your 
dude and then you got the, you go to a rocket and then you had to do training and stuff depending on what things you hit and that was it was pretty cool uh, but what I meant was in the terms of uh, realism in the sense that it just felt like the balls were just floating around it didn't really feel like a pinball it was fun but it just didn't feel like a proper pinball game in the sense that this Final Fantasy one is that it's just a tacked on pinball thing rather than an actual proper pinball Oh yeah, no, they they they've been proper lazy with it. You'll see what I mean when when you get playing it. Uh, <laughs> I I I it, it got quickly uninstalled. I did do a couple of videos on it, but then I just deleted them because I was like, oh, I don't really want to talk about it. Like, well, there we go. That is like tag uh, Titanfall Two has just gone to twenty quid. It's, oh, it just turned up on all of my screens. So like Xbox One, PS4. I don't know about PC, but it's gone down to nineteen ninety nine. That's an amazing nice. price. I I might need to pick that up. <laughs> uh, that's all my news. Uh, then uh, I mean, there's been a lot of sort of Nintendo Switch price rumours that have been going around at the moment. Uh, this latest one that I've kind of seen recently uh, is from Let's Play Video Games. Uh, they were kind of saying that they spoke to uh, someone at Game, uh, and they were kind of kind of getting some prices they're thinking it's probably going to be the price point around 199.99 uh some pounds mm-hmm. there just uh throw that because obviously it was dave was talking in euros earlier so better clarify yes. mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, being in a different country so i mean that you know the, the, i think that seems like a quite reasonable kind of price yeah, point a, a lot cheaper than the other consoles mm, but i mean we'll see We'll see if that's actually the case or not. Uh, I don't know, but uh, they're kind of expecting the controllers to launch around thirty nine ninety nine as well. That's kind of, I'd say, a reasonably standard price that they've kind of yeah. been at for a while. Um, so yeah, I'd be very interested to see how it is. But obviously, we're not going to hear anything until next year about that now. So, uh, I mean, what do, what do you think, guys? I mean, are, are you thinking that you're probably going to be picking up the Nintendo Switch, or are you still sort of uh, hungry for more information first? Uh, I will do what I always do with consoles. I will wait till it comes out to see what people make. Oh, yeah, it. of wait course, Dave. If you wish to. Ridiculously do. cheap prices <laughs> and then buy one. Um, but with the... Mate, you still don't have a current-gen console. I don't know what is going on in your life. <laughs> it's been, yeah, I it's it. been like three years, hasn't it? <laughs> Um, you know yeah, what? I saw some I saw some Xbox out. Ones in game uh, the other day, and I swear I saw one at around like a hundred and fifty quid or so. And I was just sort of, I mean, that's new as well. And I was just like, this is a, it's like there's some really good price points out there for the obviously the older generation now, rather than you know the Xbox One S. Uh, and they've got Scorpio coming out next year, but. Yeah, I, you know, it's just it's quite interesting, you know, on where Xbox is going, uh, and I think the price point wise is always going to go down on those older ones. So, it might be good to go in with that one first, maybe. But on a PS4 level, I think they're still sort of still around the two hundred price point at the moment, um, which you know is still pretty reasonable, I'd say, at the moment, because. Uh, you know they they have been a lot more expensive over the years. So uh, I, I I mean maybe you just need to wait a little bit longer. I mean Black Friday might come up with an awesome deal for you there then, Dave. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean that's about it for this week. Uh, unless anyone else uh, has anything else they want to talk about. Um no, there's obviously um, the new expansion coming for Hearthstone. Uh, head over to. Hearthpone.com. Uh, all the information about the latest cards are up there for people who are interested. Mm. Um, I will be doing a pack opening at, uh, when it comes out. Um, I may, if I have time, do a Sunday ramble where I get to just talk about all the cards and the various mechanics. Um, it does look really good. I'm really looking forward to this expansion. There's lots of interesting things that are coming. Um, I think they're doing really well covering the cards that are being cycled out, uh, which will be happening next year, hmm. beginning of next year. Um, so, yeah, so that's exciting times. Uh, other than that, not much going on, really. Cool, dude. Cool. All right. Well, uh, if you'd like to take part in this conversation, you can give it a post on our Facebook or at facebook.com forward slash game over. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Uh, you can tweet us using at go over yeah, and you can also follow us on Twitch at www.twitch.tv forward slash go over yeah. For that, those, you know, times 
throughout the week where we're on Twitch. Have we actually done Twitch in a while? No. But it will happen at some point. Yeah, it will. I could tell you about my links, but I don't have any of them in front of me, and I can't remember them off the top of my head. So I'm going to let Dave take over this part. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what Mike would be saying is subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash game over year UK, and you can almost... and. See, and also Mike would fluff the line at that point as well. <laughs> uh, and you can drop us an email at contact us at gameoveryear.net. And don't forget the most important place where you can find all of these lovely links at our website, gameoveryear.net. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, Game, game Over, over year. year. Lovely. Yeah, yeah.